Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Troy, a Total War Saga here today on the channel. We're going to be checking out the brand new Ajax and Diomedes DLC. We're going to be playing for an hour here today, and we're going to be doing an Ajax campaign. So, first up, I've got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me a free early access code of the DLC and making this Let's Play possible. So, a huge thank you to them and their fantastic community team. So, the DLC is available on the 29th of January on the Epic Game Store. It's currently sitting at $15 Australian, but uh, if you do pre-order it, you get it for $13.50. And if you do make a purchase of the DLC or anything else on the Epic Game Store, use creator code SimsyTotalWar at checkout to flick me a couple of dollary doos. I'd really much appreciate it. Also as well, leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions, all that good stuff. Right, let's have a look at Ajax and Diomedes. So, you're most looking to pause and have a look at this What's New pop-up. I like it. I like it a lot. I can see all the information here. We can work through it first up. So, we've got the new faction mechanics. Let's stay, start off with Ajax and read uh, the little description. So, challenge mighty warriors in friendly battles to unlock new champion units and achieve great renown as Ajax. For Diomedes, train your units with teachings of the Epogone and complete objectives to dominate weaker factions. Diomedes. Moving over to the new epic missions, uh, experience Ajax's rise to becoming the Great and Diomedes, uh, Diomedes return to Thebes uh, on his quest to surpass his father. Okay, you've got the stealing of the Paladinium, a new special event that allows any Achaean hero to hinder Troy's defense by capturing the statue of Athena. All right, let's have a look at the new units that we have access to. So we've got Ajax's Companions, Spear and Shield Infantry. You're most welcome to pause and have a look at the stats. We've got Ajax's Wall. These are some of the higher tier units that you get access to. I think it's tier four or five. Uh, we've got some Axemen here as well. Night Runners. Raiders. Slingers. Swordsmen. Armoured Slingers. Moving on now to Heroic Axe Runners, Renowned Axemen, Sword Masters, Island Spearmen, Slingers, Marines Spearmen, and more Salamis Swordsmen and Veteran Slingers as well. So now the Denan faction has a whopping six leaders to choose from. Moving down right to the end, we have Ajax's starting situation is normal, the Warlord of Salamis, and then we've got Diomedes towards the end, who is the King of Argos. He has a uh, normal starting situation as well. Now, the intro for this DLC is the exact same as the vanilla intro, regardless if you're playing as with uh, Hector or, or Menelaus. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to play the Ajax and Diomedes trailer um, intro video just to get us into the mood of the DLC. So we'll play the intro and I'll see you guys on the campaign map. Great Ajax who wields the strength of giants. Come and fight me! Men of Thebes! The shield who defends his brothers. <laughs> While the swift sword of Diomedes yearns to surpass his father. Together, they would challenge even the gods. Mighty Ajax. It is time to take your place at the forefront of the Achaean host. Brother, your foolish passion has doomed us. 
The island of Salamis breeds proud and prudent fighters, independent in spirit, yet willing to ally with Agamemnon and aid the Achaean cause. None can stand against the bulwark of the Achaeans. You have recently taken the settlement of Megara, but beware the men of powerful Athens who would curb your ambitions in the region. Whilst your attention was elsewhere, the pirates of Echis launched a raid and captured the Isle of Aegina. Now their ships menace Salamis itself. Retake Aegina and run these sea wolves down. Even with such challenges at your door, you will not abandon an ally in need. King Menelaus of Sparta has been wronged and must have his vengeance. Paris of Troy must pay! It is your destiny, Ajax the Great, to shield your allies with undaunted fervor and defeat all who march against you. Okay, guys, welcome to the campaign map. Let's get stuck into the Ajax the Great campaign. So let's see how they play. So in Salamis here, we have the Path to Greatness. So around the world, there are various paragons which Ajax can challenge. He may face them in non-lethal contest of military prowess. If defeated, these paragons will acknowledge his might and rejoin his armies. Moving on now to the Warrior of Renowned. So Ajax can host funeral games and convince rivals to make peace. Both Ajax and Diomedes have access to Paragon Warriors, which are mightier versions of regular soldiers. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek of how they play. Alright, so let's see what we're working with. So we have the island of Salamis here, and we've also got a town further to the north of the island. We've got Ajax, Ajax here with seven great. units. And let's have a look through the faction. So he's the warlord of Salamis, Ajax, son of Telamon. He has a plus five diplomatic relations with the Achaeans and a minus ten faction relations there. Okay, so if we click on him, we can actually go Sword through ally. all his stats if we want. We can go through his character stats, his battle effects, campaign effects, and skills and equipment. So, Ajax of Salamis. Ajax the Great, a fearsome and cunning defender whose prowess in battle is unrivaled across the Aegean Sea. So, looking at his traits, he has the Ajax lineage, which gives him a plus 12% to campaign movement range at sea. That's quite good, particularly if we have to make our way all the way over to Troy eventually. And he has a plus 5 missile resistance of all... Ah, plus five missile resistance of all units in Hero's army. That's good, because I was going to say he's quite a large entity unit and is probably going to get targeted by archers quite a bit. So he's an epic hero, of course. Plus 20% generated rain, uh, rage in battle. 15 morale of the hero and plus three influence in this region. And he's a Homeric character as well. That means he cannot be killed in battle. They only can be wounded. Okay, looking at his armor, it's only 40, his morale is 90, his speed is 45, his melee attack is 60, his melee defense is 68, his damage is 1.2k, which I think is quite a bit. Charge, and then he's got Siege Attacker, Hide, Immune to Psychology, the Aristea, of course, and Her Herculean Throw. Throws a rock causing damage. I can't wait to see that. In the campaign and battles, grant me a Nyota of your strength, O Hercules, so I may crush these enemies. <laughs> I like the sound of that. All right, battle effects, 2.5% to the hero's hit points, more rage in battle, uh, plus 10 melee defense of the hero, 15 morale, 5 defense of all heroes in the army. Okay, and then missile resistance again. So we've got motivation in the camp main movement. We've got C movement as well. Influence this character. Yes, they can't be killed in battle. Okay, so looking at the skills as well, we've got the Herculean throw. So in tier one here, so we have a flanking buff. Then we have a armor buff. Way of Athena. 
Way of Ares, attack and defense. Treasury or hit points. Fatigue or melee improvement. But you're most welcome to pause and have a look at if you want to see the entirety of Ajax's skill points because I am, for the first time, playing this DLC off the bat, so I don't know the the cheese or the sweat way to spec him just yet, but maybe you guys at home can sort of um, make your decision, I guess. Right, equipment-wise, we start off with Ajax Tower Shield. And we've got some follower items here as well. A ship and a helmet. I think that is. Right, objectives. We've got the Homeric objectives, of course, but here is Ajax in the artwork. So complete all the steps in the epic, mi epic mission uh, chain. Make sure the following factions are destroyed. Hector, Troy, or Paris reach rank 27 with the following character. And, oh, we also get another character eventually. Total War victory is probably not what we're going to get. So, we'll see how we go with Homeric victory. I want to do a full hour-long special here today, in today's video. And the main objective of this series is to make Salamis a strong kingdom, I guess. We want to probably take this neighbouring territory in and around here, and then we'll eventually set sail to Troy and play the battle in this series. I am open to doing a Diomedes campaign, but it just sort of depends on this campaign. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. But support this video, and I will do more Total War Troy on the channel. So we have 1.6k food in the bank and we're making 1.1k per turn. So food isn't going to be a concern in this campaign. We've got plenty of wood here as well. 900 and then 900 well on the way. We've only got 200 stone. So stone is probably what we want to focus on soon. Along with bronze as we're currently operating at a minus 30. We've got 50 gold and we're making 20 per turn. Let's have a look at the royal decrees. So we've already got the wood. We've already got the gold. So bronze... Granaries and Royal Stone. I think I want to go with Royal Stone. From from what I can remember, yeah, you get a plus two happiness in own provinces. So we probably want to get the People's Feast to get that public order happiness buff. Because if we will go to Bronze, we're not doing agent stuff yet, nor are we recruiting medium tier units just yet. So we'll go with the Royal Stone because I want to try and get the People's Feast. You've got to make your decision pretty early on in Troy because seven turns for one tech is, is quite a while. Right, looking at the diplomacy as well. Uh, we'll go for the quick deal. Okay, so there's potentially a fair few stuff we can do here. And I want to try and squeeze as much money as I can out from the AI. So I might do that off camera because that's always a little bit boring. Our strength is only 5 for now. So I want to see where that puts us within these neighboring territories. So still quite a bit of a way before we need to build up. Okay, so we are currently at war with one faction, and we're currently uh, trading with Agamemnon of Mycenae. Okay, uh, so we'll go back to diplomacy in a bit. I want to show you guys these other um, new features for the DLC. So the Divine Will. So I believe the only new god is Hephaestus. Artemis, I'm assuming, is the the Amazon's DLC, which I never played. I never did a Let's Play on the channel because I just wasn't interested in it and I had other stuff going on. So I actually don't know about the general consensus. Was that free or C? Like, good? Was it enjoyable? I actually don't know because I never played it. Maybe I need to go back to it at some point, but maybe let me know, guys. Right, so this is the new god Hephaestus, which is what we're going to be going for. So we get a, first off, we get a plus 10 morale of shielded units. Towards the end... Fire touched, we get a plus 30% whopping armor to piercing damage of melee units, and we also get plus 20 armor of the hero. So that's really going to help out us out because Ajax is hanging around with his bare chest out. <laughs> we also um, have the agent recruitment available of craftsmen. But here are the the stats for the cult of Hephaestus. So this is what we're going to be focusing on for this series. So, plus 10 morale already. Should we invoke a Hatacomb? 500. I think we'll leave it for some for now. We're probably going to be able to build some temples in and around here eventually. 
Right, so Warriors of Renown. So this is the uh, Renowned feature for Ajax. So Renowned reflects Ajax's growing fame and influence with the Denans. It grows when you complete special missions to avenge allies, gain top tier traits, and win heroic victories. Renowned improves your diplomatic standing with Denan factions and allows you to host a celebration to force peace with warring neighbors. So we can select a prize. So to host a celebration, you need to offer a prize to the winner of the games held during the celebration. These ancillaries you select as a reward will be given away. So at the moment, we don't have any. We'll be able to get a lot of these. So I don't mind this. It's a recycling mechanic. Uh, there are similarities to Warhammer 2 with the Dwarves, but being making your allies, sorry, not allies, your neighbors force peace. That's not too bad. And what's up here as well? Oh, okay. So we actually get quite decent faction effects all the way up here. Plus six trade deal. Barters. And then just better quality relations with the Denons. So we can invite neighboring factions like the Athenians and the Corinthians. So here is Ajax's Warrior of Renowned. Right, let's have a look at the path to greatness. From humble origins, as a promising warrior from Salamis, you have set out to prove your greatness to the world and become a celebrated hero. Formidable warriors known as paragons await your challenges. Defeat them in non-lethal combat and they will acknowledge your might by joining your faction as powerful paragon units. So, have we got a couple nearby? Yes, but by the look of this, this costs quite a bit. Are these guys even that good? That's just my instant reading. I guess they are, because they're paragon units. But that is a lot of investment. So, particularly this guy here. 3,500. Yeah, we might actually save that before doing that. We might as well save the grain. To try it, I guess. Instead of like, we, we nearly blew 500 from that religious uh, Hetacomb Act. Okay, let's have a quick look at our construction capacity before we have a look at Ajax's army and play this first battle. So in Salamis, we have a construction slot here. We can use a special building here. So we've got the Maker's Camp. Oh, so that gives us favor to Hephaestus. Okay, I'm about to say Hephaestian. Hephaestus. It's nearly with the name Ajax as well. I always tend to go Ajax. Because it's been seared into my brain, the football club, saying it properly. It's been a while since, I guess, there's been any <laughs> Ajax content directed at me. Just generally. So, if I do slip up and say Ajax, um, or Ajax instead of Ajax, my apologies. But I guess the Dutch <laughs> subscribers will probably be okay with it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, so that's 70%. We do have access to Salamis Spearmen and Swordsmen eventually as well. So what was towards the end here? Ajax Companions. So that's a unit once we get to Tier 3. And Ajax Wall. Wow, these units look fantastic. If I do say so myself. Or we can build a temple to Hephaestus. I think what we'll do, we'll have a look at the building browser for now, if you guys want to see the whole chain. But, I guess... Yeah, so can we build it? We can't build a religious building here. So, we'll build this then. Grant an ancillary, ancillary upon construction. Oh, good. We'll probably be able to get rid of that eventually as well. Okay, uh, we don't want to put too much of an investment into this because it's probably going to get capped, isn't it? But I guess it doesn't matter too much. I think we're better off potentially saving the money because we want to go with Lodge's tent eventually and we just haven't got the money if we're going to build this. All right, we'll leave it like that. Okay, let's have a look at Ajax's we'll army. So he starts here. off with one unit of Island Club Warriors. There are the stats. 
We've got one unit of Ajax companions. So we've got one of these earlier on already. They didn't have the crazy armor that those other guys had, though, I don't think. So I'm curious to see how they perform in this first little battle. Spearmen here as well. Spear and shield. And then we've just got some island skirmishes as well. From the get-go in our local Caribbean, we have access to islanders, uh, spearmen, Achaean slingers, and eventually warriors of Artemis. All right, well, I without further ado, break. let's push out and fight this first battle. Let's chuck a quick save. So they've got some light swordsmen, two young spears, and two slingers. So they do have skirmisher supremacy on, on us, I would say. I reckon our island skirmishes aren't going to stand up to them, so we're going to have to flank with them. Spearmen should be able to deal with their young spears, but these... Island Club Warriors and the Companions and Ajax are probably going to have to flank quite hard. Okay, so no god is on our side either for now. We're going to have a quick look at the terrain, I guess. Our area is a lot more forestry. Theirs is not, so we should be able to close the distance here, which should be fine. Alright, let's fight this one on the battlefield. For the first of the Ajax and Diametes DLC. Okay. Let's continue. But I'm going to be curious to see how well this Ajax and Diomedes factions perform on the harder difficulties. You'd imagine they'd do quite well in auto resolve due to the morale and armor buffs. So we're deploying on this huge cliff side here, <laughs> which I don't know if I overly like. So how's the best way to play this? We probably could... Yeah, probably can't skirmish down there. We've basically got to pick a path. I think this way is probably... Yeah, but they might be able to arc their shots down there, I guess. What a strange deployment zone, I guess. So they're going to sit there. We'll sit here and we'll try and swing around that way. We could leave the skirmishes up there, but I'd rather have them further down, I think. Okay, so let's move the army here. So we'll make a front line of spears. We'll put Ajax in the middle. We'll put our skirmishes further at the back, and then we'll put these guys that will try and flank hard as well if we can. We're not going to get enough movement there, but that's all right. The part of the um, the deployment zone's blocked. But let's have a look at him, I guess. Here is the man, the myth, the hero, the legend, Ajax the Great, with a turtle <laughs> donned his shield. <laughs> Oh, cool. Oh, there he is. The bare-chested brute. So we've got our stock standard spearmen there. And let's have a look at these guys. That's who I wanted to look at. So here are Ajax's companions. A great big old shield. Kind of looks similar to the... <laughs> The Troy movie shield that Ajax had. Didn't he have this like crazy hammer when Hector jacked him in the movie? Yeah, he's got a huge spear this time around. But I guess let's have a look at the enemy combatants. Real quick. Nothing too crazy or overly impressive. Alright, let's start the battle and see how we go. So it looks like they're going to stand firm. They gotta reform their position, so we might be able to swing some dudes further this way. Alright then. Without further ado, let's stop sitting back there with our hands in our pockets. So we'll try and go for something like that. And let's see how we go. Okay. So we've got the Herculean throw. So we can throw that boulder there. It does look like they're gonna be reforming. It's currently 70% in their our favour. But I'm going to chuck Ajax right into the thick of it of this fight. Because I'm curious to see how well he's going to perform. With not much armor, that is probably my major concern. And their general is a archer unit. So from what I can remember still, it's been quite some time since I've played Troy. Maybe four or five months, to be honest. I haven't played it since my Achilles... Aeneas, Hector, and Paris 
and Menelaus campaigns that I did, well, I was going to say earlier on in the year, but I guess it's last year, isn't it? It was 2020. So, from what I can remember, skirmishes and chariots were still very much the meta. Oh, what's this? I thought I commanded all my skirmishes to come up. Oh, well, nothing but professionalism in a video on my channel. Okay, those young spears he probably could have a crack at. Is under attack. So try and disrupt a bit here. So what's the range on this throw? That's what I want to know. Lob one of those at the light swords. Oh, here we go. A big old chuck. Okay. Looks like they're going to engage me here, so just make a, a line real quick. Counter charge that, counter charge this. This unit really should have been up here, so that's annoying. So they're now swinging across. Move Ajax up to compensate. Alright, swing around. Alright, looks like they're going to go that way, so let's swing our units. Try and hit this unit further back here. So Ajax is in the thick of it. So we'll swing our companions around to flank. We'll send you in to disrupt this. So let's have a look at what we're doing. So fierce fighting has broken out. And we are using the blood and gore pack now. Ajax is already made that grass a very dark red. So they're now pushing that out, which is good. Okay, I've got some spears routing, which isn't good, so try and focus on this. You swing around and hit this. Now, how close can you throw a boulder? If you can or not. He can. So he can actually throw a boulder from point blank range. <laughs> and lob it in. That's great. Okay, they're now routing. So come back around here. Try and focus on those guys. They're now broken. They're broken as well. And so are you. Right. So let's push up and deal with the general. I want to try and maintain some pressure there. So a couple of these guys are coming back. So as long as you skirmish away, you're fine. Alright, sweet. But Ajax now should be able to engage this archer unit in combat. Oh, they're intertwined here a little bit. Come on, Ajax, hit him with your big stuff. There we go. Okay. So how's everyone doing? They're shaking, now come back. You continue to focus on them. Make sure each unit is disrupting. Someone, you guys are focusing on them, perfect. Might actually get one of them to hit those swordsmen. Victory so now, oh, actually, he actually might lose that. No, he's doing all right now. I might need some support. Where were those Ajax companions gone? Yeah. I thought he'd be a bit more formidable in a fight like this, but it's pretty back and forth. Show no fear. Can I throw a rock at you? From point blank range. Make your peace now. No, I do I need to move back? Do I run away? Alright, let's move you up then. Yeah, come on, come on, pull Ajax back. <laughs> Yeah, now try and throw a rock at the single entity. Oh, it's an invalid target, is it? Yeah, but look at it. Alright, throw them at these guys then. Is he gonna do it? Maybe. Alright. You're focusing on them. No one else is getting stretched apart, weirdly. 
Okay, we can get in now that we have Aura stay up. So we get 25% hit points and then armor, melee attack. Oh, we've got victory now anyway before we can use it. Okay, make sure everyone here is running down a unit. So, so far, fun short little battle. Not the best optimized in tactics, but I was just sort of testing out the various abilities and how well Ajax performs. But I do like the look of these Ajax companions, though. Alright, let's speed things up. And we're going to try and run down as many of them as possible. Now, isn't the play to leave the Lord alive so you can get... A second battle so you can farm skill points. That's what I usually do in Warhammer, but I think I've killed that guy. Because it conflicted with my wanting to see how Ajax does. Yeah, so his armor really lets him down a bit. Maybe needs to be a little bit more flanky. I don't know. With Ajax, I think, oh, I want to chuck him in right into the thick of it. You're causing a little bit of friendly fire there, but it's okay. Decisive victory. You're victorious. The corpses of the enemy are lit to the ground, and those still able to flee do so with laughter of our gods ringing in their ears. All right, let's end the battle there. Okay, so Ajax deployed 452. So we were slightly outnumbered because they deployed 497. We lost 85, but we got automatic replenishment as well, so... That's awesome. We didn't lose the entirety of any unit. That's the main thing. And then you have uh, 63 remaining. So Ajax got 25 kills. The Club Warriors got 108. Oh, Ajax companions only got 82. Well, to be fair, they weren't in the battlefield overly too quick. When they were the flanking unit. Spearman, 34, 88. Ah, the skirmishes did all right. 49 and then 41 even though one of those units was delayed <laughs> I didn't bring him up with the main army and their swordsman 36 there 24 11 there whoa a good old decapitation there by Ajax yeah this must be my first playthrough with the blood and gore DLC as well I was sort of a little bit bamboozled by it I guess oh so one unit it did remain, but I think... Oh, they might run away then. I don't know. We'll see how we go. So we can take them on, which gives us a 20% replenishment. And we can spill their blood to get 9. We can barter their lives. I want to take on the replenishment. It feels good to no, that's the last of the army. But we do get a... Uh, oh, yes. We complete this mission. Mission successful. 250 wood and 80 Watch bronze there as well. Maintain 12 units. We've got a new mission. Mustering the troops. Okay, so how long will it take us to get here? We have to go by sea. And that's going to essentially kill a movement point. So then we can't take it in one turn. So we'll move back to the island of Salamis. And we'll go with some skill points. So he's now rank 2. So we can go with the flank defense. I don't mind that, because we're already going to get a lot of armor. When are we ever going to get the opportunity to get more flanking defense? I'm going to go with Warning Shout, which gives us a 2.5% hero hit points buff, and we also get a flanking defense. Flanking defense improves the reduced bonus of attackers when units are being attacked from the sides or behind. Particularly when you're outnumbered, you'd be surprised how much that happens. And we're already, like, going to be an armoured faction. You could really go super hardcore and be, like, a, a Testudo tank if you really wanted to. <laughs> okay, so, let's go back to our recruitment now. Now that we've got a little bit of cash, I don't think it affects us that much. Well, resources. The last campaign I did was... Yeah, Rune. With Third Age, and I guess I'll call him cash and gold and stuff. Okay. Lord so, let's have a look at our recruitment. What have we got access to? So, we can get Warriors of Artemis eventually. So, I think getting... Hmm. 
Maybe I like skirmishes yeah. a lot though, man. Maybe getting two units, but we get a siege, haven't we? It's probably going to be a siege, isn't it? It's quite a large garrison that we can already sort of see. We might need a couple more melee though. Defending the so righteous. we'll go with that for now. Right, so we'll go with two spearmen and two slingers. Alright, I think that's done with the first turn. I think we've gone through a lot of stuff here. I've recapped the campaign quite well. So what I'll do now is I'll dive into diplomacy and see how we go. And I'll try and just squeeze some money out and then we'll try and... Um, push to Agena because I want to try and min max this to get the most amount of resource yield I can get. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, we got some diplomacy here with Diomedes, non aggression pack, and military access, and he's going to give us 800 food for that. So we'll accept that with Diomedes. Alright, sweet. Menelaus wants a non aggression pack for 460. Grain it seems to be in massive supply down in Achaia. And it's always a valuable resource in my opinion. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. The Cult of Hephaestus has gone up. And we should be able to push, push to the island of Aegina soon. So we've got 15 morale for shields. Perfect. We're also getting some more ancillaries as well. When we get some more of them, we'll be able to... I sell them off. So, we should have the movement to push to the island here, or is this it going to take all our movement points? So, if I attack... Choice hang on. If I attack the settlement, no, we can go all the way over. Okay, sweet. We'll encircle for now, because we do have a potential event here. And equipment-wise, we can... Oh, uh, yeah. So, we still need five before we max that out. It's going to be a while before I'm willing to give some of way of these ancillaries. So we'll go to the path to greatness, because I do believe there is a lord here that we can challenge. And we'll be able to get a unit. Yes, so it's 3.5k grain. We do have enough now. So we'll challenge you. This is my first first time doing the event. So a new paragon challenger. So it looks like an army spawned here. So we'll quickly stop this siege and deal with this. Now, from what I'm aware... The armies actually won't fight, it's between the two generals, so... I guess we'll just auto-resolve this one. Into the fray. I wonder if you can actually play it on the, the battlefield. Look at the army surrounding as well, that looks cool. But a close victory, yeah, zero, zero, zero. We get the Watch army the experience. And I guess it's an RNG or whether or not Ajax will win. So, trait gained, plus 5 campaign movement range to the army. Sweet, we'll take that. Paragon defeated. You have defeated a Paragon. Excellent. We've managed to get two renowned. So, that means we should be able to get a unit from the special recruitment pool. Here we go. Doubtful units, Paragon. Yeah, so these units are slightly better than what we can normally use. Melee defense and armor. It's quite high. Because we've only got access to just like low tier spearmen for now. Okay, sweet. Quite a bit of an investment. 3.5k grain. But hey, we're going to be able to take the island of Regina. And we're going to be able to get some of that grain back. <laughs> Nowhere near as much. But a small percentile. We are making 800 turn per turn, so we do have quite a bit. But we've managed to take the entire province here now. We've united Salamis. We have a commandment as well. I think going with organized uh, games to get the happiness. We're also upgrade the Craftsman Square because we want to get more favor to Hephaestus. The more the better. That's the god we're really going to be focusing in and using earlier on. Once we get the resources, we can d diversify our divine will. All right, so... We're only at war with these guys. Now, after I taking that, do they want peace? Help. No, but what's this little icon here? This would increase your reliability, really? I guess I've sworn some sort of... War blood pack or something. That's strange. <laughs> you don't very often lose rating for making peace. Okay, that maybe is unique to the DLC. Uh, Agamemnon is willing to give me a military alliance and access. 
We'll try and squeeze a little bit of money out of him. Sweet. He's going to accept that. The more we can get in, the better. So we can just, like, war deck and swamp any neighboring adversaries I want to go through. Uh, I don't really want to negotiate with the Corinthians. Ajax may as well try yeah, so they're probably willing to nearly accept peace, but... I really don't want to deal with this. Although I really like sort of consolidating my kingdoms in Troy, I don't often like taking too many of these island territories, because especially when the war breaks out between Troy and the Achaeans, yeah, they do get hit quite earlier on, so I like to be able to keep my territory quite defendable, but I guess there's not really much we can do when we can't sue for peace with them. But for now, we're going to be able to prosper. I just think of the mid to late game, we're not going to be able to defend Ajax these far-reaching well territories. Yeah, so now they're actually more willing for peace, 4.2, but we need to completely and utterly destroy them. Menelaus of Sparta. Now, the best way to get as much resources out of the AI, instead of stacking all of the alliances on top of each other, you go with the uh, military access, then you go with the defensive... And sort of, yeah, work your way up. And try and get as much from the AI as you can. Okay, so it looks like we're uniting the Denans under one coalition. We haven't found Odysseus nor Achilles just yet. But Diomedes of Argos... Is uh, wanting a military alliance. Good. If I am to confederate at some point, I think we'll go with Diomedes so I can just show off more of the DLC. Okay, we're in striking range here of the island. Okay. So, Melios. And... Is it Diomato or something? I need to learn a lot of these Greek names. I haven't played in this particular part of the map yet. Okay. Let's try and take this entire province then. 14 units in operation. Nothing too crazy. We will have another battle here today. I can promise you that. We're going to be playing for an hour or so. Um, I guess we'll loot an Occupy. Oh, we found some exceptional warriors, eh? Oh, harpies. Look like they litter these aisles. That's alright. Skirmishes are really quite good in Troy, so... Ready for war. Uh, we, we're going to get access to archers, though, soon, so I don't know how many we're going to be able to get them, and I don't particularly want to stay too long in these. I want to go against the Corinthians and Thebes and Athens soon. And Menelaus wants a straight barter. Okay, I'm going to accept that. Because that will get our bronze up. Okay, we're going to invoke a Hetacomb with Hephaestus. Because we've got 8.2k in the bank now. Okay, so there's a couple armies hanging around their last province here. But we should be able to push into... Them. Uh, no, I don't want to accept that. I need my wood, because I'm going to be able to upgrade my territories a lot quicker. <laughs> I'm willing to negotiate for my terms and reject theirs. So, we could go after Corinth, Athens, or Thebes. Let me know in the comments. Oh, we've been attacked here during the end turn phase. We'll check a quick save, because if we can win this here today, it might be the last of them. So, we have been intercepted in the... The sea, but it's going to be a deployable field battle. Okay, so two you two lords does make it difficult, but we'll fight this one on the campaign map. We should be all right. Okay, let's get stuck in. Two skirmishers, three slingers. We got those paragon units as well to test out. They do have their own harpies as well. So two army groups are now coming out. It's currently pouring down with rain, not exactly what we want. 
And our deployment zone is split apart by a huge rock. They are attacking us at the end of the day, so we do have that as an advantage. And we've got morale and armor on our side, so... We have to fall at a defensive position and hold, which is really where Ajax excels. I know he's a defender. I would have liked him to be <laughs> a fighter, but I guess there's too many fighters. Might make him a little bit underpowered. But to be fair, maybe Diomedes' playstyle is more of a fighter. I haven't played and checked out with him. Alright, so... We'll, we'll try, yeah, I think we'll try and confederate with Diomedes. But I am willing to do a Diomedes campaign. Okay. Let's move there. Okay. So we'll use the terrain to our advantage. No, I don't want to use these weaker Axe Islanders as a corner piece, which is probably going to get smacked. How about I make a... It's two army groups here. Hang on. So we'll make a strong, long front line with staunch spearmen, eh? And then we'll make an, an, a secondary axe flanking attack group. And we'll move. No. No, hang on. We'll put the Paragon unit there because I don't think that's going to hold. I want more to flank with. If I could flank with four, that would be ideal. So move you back. Move this Paragon unit here. And that can hold that corner. Alright, there should be some terrain and foliage here that we can hide behind. Because in Troy, it is quite dense and luscious. So you're able to hide units a lot more easier. And this should be enough. Hiding in that back corner. Alright, we'll stick Ajax there. And we'll move our skirmishes just behind. So we've got a defensive battle gameplay here. So you can sit back, relax, Ajax can throw his boulders. He kind of acts like a catapult unit because those boulders are a 40 second cooldown and are quite strong. So here are the Paragon units. I do believe they have a radius and stuff. Ajax's uh, units on the far here do have a an ability but We've made a front line, and then you can't even see them down here. <laughs> We're hiding four units of Axemen in the thick wooded shrubbery. Now, we should be right for this, but seeing there's two fighters on the harder difficulties, the more general units there are, when you get to like three to four, you can struggle. Units... You can manipulate and destroy quite easily. But uh, a bit of food for thought. Be careful when you're engaging multiple armies with multiple lords. Or heroes or whatever they call them in this. Things can get tricky out right. These are all on fire at will. I'm nearly tempted to turn like skirmish mode off because I want them to hold. So they're all on fire at will as well. Uh, oh, they brought back guard mode for this, didn't they? So maybe I should put everyone on guard mode in a moment. For this total war. Alright, so it does look like our axe units are going to be undetected. We'll move them. It's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a march. But I think what's best is to allow the AI to push up, hit us, and then interlock. With our spears. Oh, they've snuck some harpies up there as well. And then we'll flank around with our axemen. So we've got some small little skirmish firepower going off here. As some lighter swordsmen try and push my front line. Luckily I put my heavier units on that corner because it looks like no the AI ammunition. wants to aggressively push... Ajax's champions there. So this is the new unit. The DLC. Ajax's champions. Taller, larger, bolder than some of the units you can get. They're now holding well. And we're currently skirmishing against their harpies. Well, what I'll get you guys to do is try and nearly focus all your firepower on these harpies. They're only 60 in a unit, apart from the 90. So... 
We'll try and hit that. They're now retreating. Those harpies have nearly been decimated. Okay, there was an opportunity to move the axemen around, but what I don't want is for four units to pull away from the front line. I want them to in attach in melee combat and sort of interlock with our front line. Ajax can go in there and sort of try and soften up the general that's pushing so far. We've also got a supporting active spearman there as well. Okay, they nearly made their way halfway up. We might actually have to counter charge at some point. Try and fire into the thick of that with everyone. Instead of trying to diversify your shots on singular units. They seem to be pushing headstrong into that bottom right corner. It might be an opportunity to counter charge. Yeah, let's push for our position. We've got four units on the left flank here just sitting idly by. They need to go. And we'll swing the Paragon units in those two spare further around to flank. Ajax is now in the thick of it. And we have four units of Axemen well on the way. I might have misjudged the distance. Mm. I wanted to make sure those axemen were safe and hidden and secure enough. I could have risked being a little bit more forward. Because it's my spearmen on the far right flank and the paragon unit that are going to make the first wrapping maneuver. The battle might even end before those axemen turn up. But we've surrounded them here. And as you can see, these Paragon units have a a blue Aurora buff for following units. Oh, you can push up there. Yeah. This is Ajax's low armor. He really can't go toe to toe with fighters. You really have to sit him back and be quite passive. Oh, he actually might get caught there. Pull him out. Oh, he's actually routing. Ugh. Yeah. Just personally, I prefer my heroes and legendary lords to be able to be somewhat aggressive and push and hold their own. But hey. If you've got a choice to play with Diomedes or... Ajax in this DLC to start your first let's play. I had to go with Ajax. <laughs> I love the big old fool. Alright, so it's still 60% in our favour. We should be alright. Our skirmish supremacy is doing well. And our spearmen have done their work holding the line. Our axemen are only just rocking up now. Yeah, that's my bad. I could have hid them in a different forest location. So we basically played this battle without <laughs> four axemen. <laughs> I guess we're keeping them fresh. We've really put our spearmen through the ringer here, but we've got automatic replenishment as well. And we're going to be able to take on replenishment from this victory as well. It's going to 70% now. Ajax has now come back. And we'll try and throw some boulders into those units because they do like a pretty decent chunk of damage. Hey, we have victory here today. Alright. Now, trying to run these guys down in the sea is going to be incredibly infuriating, so we want to try and get rid of many of them as possible. We'll speed things ahead and we'll try and run them down. I'll see you in a sec. Let's end it there. Decisive victory. You don't necessarily need me to see.
you don't necessarily need to see me running them all down. So Ajax deployed 1.2k, lost 263. Oh, so we did outnumber them by quite a bit, actually. The 700 had pushed. Well, we actually probably faced them evenly because it was Axemen. <laughs> they lost 235 and 400 there. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted, Ajax's companions got a whopping 108. And the Paragon spear units there got 125. So already, you can see the massive dividing class. But to be fair, that Paragon unit did flank. But Ajax's companions held for the majority of the match, so... The matcher. Uh, Ajax, this should be the end of a kiss. And I do like how it was reflected that he did lose like 70% of his health there. He was bloodied and bruised up in battle, let's say. Nope. I do not want an aggression pact. What's this? Sparta has been attacked by some men of Crete. That's the only th problem when you have military alliances. You get called in a bit. Right. Ajax the Great. So, let's upgrade Ajax. The Way of Athena. Melee and points. Attack, no. Particularly with Ajax, we need defense and, and hit points and stuff. So, we shall go the way of Athena. Because we're going to have to make him a very passive and defensive lord. Because that's what he is. Right. And let him sit back, relax, and, and inspire neighboring troops. Okay, that army's now gone. We'll take on the 15% replenishment. And we'll push to the island now. And then I guess we'll try and colonize Melios. Alright, let's finish them off. So, then we're at war with no one. Well, <laughs> that we started off with. Now we're at war with Crete. I have no ambition of pushing down to Crete. I feel like I want to deal with Corinthians and Thebes and, and Athens. But they're now destroyed. Fantastic. Alright. So, now we've got Harpies at our disposal. The end tier ones I really like. Ready for war. The Dark Harpies. Okay. Yeah, I guess we go to Melos, eventually. It's like a volcano settlement. Cool. Ajax has made his way to Melos, and we're going to set him up a new Holiday Island home. On a volcano, which seems a little bit active, which frightens me. It's going to cost a thousand warriors, but we'll take it. Because it's quite a large castle. But these out tier provinces, we are going to need to uh, beef up their defense as well. Yeah, so we can get harpies, but the thing is, we haven't got the bronze for them just yet, so even though we've got them. We can't recruit too many. Right, so we've got the entire province here. And we've also got these three territories further back. So we have six in total now. Yeah. I guess we make our way up against Athens, make some plans. Shielding the weak. An emissary from a friendly faction cries for your help. Salamis will go to war, swear an oath to right the wrong. Oh, I guess this is what happened prior to that. So... It looks like they call for Ajax the Great. So they want us to go to war with the Corinthians. We get a plus 10 with Denan factions. We can go to war immediately or we can swear an oath to do it and then do it in five turns. Answer the call. I think swear an oath to right the wrong. So I probably wanted to go against Athens because they were closer and the Athenians, but... It looks like Ajax the Great is going to be drawn against fighting the Corinthians. So, I guess we're going to have to head up that way. Ajax rushes to protect. Salamis will go to war. Yeah, so you can do it now if you're in range. But seeing as we're island hopping at the moment, we are going to have to 
decide to go to war with the Corinthians a little bit later on. Alright. Defeat the following hero's army. 14 units. Well, looks like Ajax is going to Corinth. We're going to Force March. Yeah, so we're going to lose a lot of attrition there. You do have to stay quite close to the islands. Okay. So we're not at war with them just yet, but we need to make our way back up there, which we'll do. Right, well, unfortunately on that note, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching this hour-long campaign of Total War Saga Troy. Checking out the Ajax and Diomedes DLC. I've got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me a free early access code of the DLC and making this Let's Play possible. So, a huge thank you to them and their fantastic community team. So, the DLC is available on the 29th of January on the Epic Game Store. It's currently sitting at $15 Australian, but uh, if you do pre-order it, you get it for $13.50. And if you do make a purchase of the DLC or anything else on the Epic Game Store, use karate code Simpsy Total War at checkout to flick me a couple of dollary dues. I'd really much appreciate it. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video. And feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want channel members are available use credit code simply total war on the epic game store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks we've got twitter discord merchandise facebook steam group instagram twitch and google plus links all in the description below as well but above all guys make sure to take care of yourselves have a fantastic rest of your day my name has been simsy much love from australia goodbye <laughs>